Hello everyone, and here we are, Fraxon here once again, and today we're taking another look at the Furutaka, the tier 5 cruiser uh, Japanese side. And initially I had done a video where I was comparing it to the Kuma, and I had not been satisfied at all by the gameplay experience, I find it to be rather dreadful. In, as a cruiser, the reload rate is rubbish, both in terms of the torpedoes and both in terms of the main turrets. However, from that time I have upgraded the Furutaka, uh, pretty much in all aspects apart from the hull that would have simply increased AA guns and survivability. So uh, the modification means I will be firing at 13 kilometers and I will be firing um, slightly more effectively. Before the cooldown was 22 seconds, now I think it's down to 18. It's still an enormity, um, however um, I've been trying to grind it out and uh, it's been really slow and painful. However, one of these games did actually go pretty well, so here I'd like to introduce you to it. Alright, and here we are with the Furutaka gameplay as promised. So immediately in the middle of the action, uh, kind of skip the part of uh, initial positioning, I think it's much to the benefit and entertainment of everybody, me included, when recasting this in Xbox. Anyway, <clears throat> immediately I'm seeing, I saw some destroyer here hiding, I think it's worth trying a shot even though he's hiding <clears throat> in the cloud of smoke. Um, I try a shot, it doesn't really work, So, but I'm, I'm not too unsatisfied with that, that's very common. Moving on towards, here I see, there's one Cleveland to my left. I see a Wyoming and a Miyogi, two targets I really don't want to be confronting as a cruiser since battleships are directly advantaged uh, in these engagements. I see the Cleveland tier 6 American cruiser that will literally tear me apart if it has the chance to. Um, therefore, I do um, fire on the target simply because there was pretty much nothing else to fire on. I have a 13 km range, just about. However, I do see the destroyers uh, on the left. They're still kind of smokescreen, but I think uh, I might be able to maybe destroy one or two. So here I actually managed to get two shots, and I think I'm going much far, uh, too far ahead to be able to hit them, so I'm considering hiding between these islands or uh, drastically, let's say, reducing my speed in order to have a better shot on them. I do switch to armor-piercing rounds just because I think I need uh, additional DPS. I actually see uh, two destroyers, I'm actually getting a bit, let's say, confused on which target I should hit. However, I do decide to, to take the one that is um, in closer proximity to me. I do manage to land a couple of shots. I th see my allies are doing, let's say, um, great on it, there's a lot of fire, I have a Kuma behind me firing on it, so I'm not really too worried about that, so I just think, oh well, uh, full speed ahead, somebody else will eventually get the kill, that's not a big deal, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, I might be able to get, let's say, one final salvo on the destroyer, I take my chances, and actually I manage to sink the destroyer, so here I'm, I'm, my, the feeling is rather upbeat. And especially in this situation, I'm feeling happy because I'm hidden behind this island. I, I don't think I'm detected by this battleship. So I see this Wyoming, this slowly, just slowly edging and lumbering forward to my position. So I'm thinking, well, well I have torpedoes that have seven kilometer range. He's approaching five kilometers. I might be able to ambush him. In my ideal, let's say, uh, mental world, I am. I managed to position myself in a broadside position, which means basically horizontally, and the other ship will also arrive as a broadside, but at that point I will have fired my torpedoes and I will have destroyed it. However, the plan hinges upon two critical uh, assumptions, that this island is actually hiding me, and that the enemy player is, not party is tunnel visioning on some other target and is not actually aware I'm here. So I do set my position up. And, uh, however, at this point I'm starting to have second thoughts, because uh, I see just the, the Wyoming isn't getting that much closer to me, or maybe not as fast as I would have liked. I was uh, relatively afraid that the Wyoming might have escaped the trap, and might have deviated and maybe spotted me somehow. However, I see an ally is firing from behind, and that, and that, and that gives me, let's say, the idea to um, rush out and try to uh, rush this Wyoming. Uh, I see his cannons are turned in a completely different direction, I feel even more reassured and I'm thinking most definitely with these three torpedoes I will be able to do some massive damage. I decide for a widespread because I'm thinking maybe he if, even if he's aware, uh, let's say dodging might not be that easy if 
uh, they're spread out. However, my assumptions proved to be very wrong and I completely missed those three torpedoes. That is uh, a bit of a mistake, although they, um, the other Wyoming was not in a broadside. So the only other solution I have to avoid, let's say, gun range fights at point blank that will utterly destroy me is basically turn the, the ship around and decide to torpedo him at point blank range. That is exactly what I'm going to do. So I fire off three torpedoes, all three instant hits, battleship completely obliterated. And the reason why I had to circle around is that with, um, with the Furutaka, uh, your torpedoes, you don't have them on both sides. You literally have three torpedoes on one side and three torpedoes on the other. So you can't ever bear uh, bring to bear, let's say, six um, torpedoes on one side. However, behind me is a Cleveland and with only 487 points of health, I'm thinking the alley behind me that's been firing off like crazy, by the way, will most definitely be able to kill it. However, as facts do prove out, all these, let's say, um, apparently good looking salvos are actually missing the target completely. So I'm thinking, well, this might just as well be a job for a Furutaka to do, which basically doesn't fire that often and is basically there to kind of on a scavenger hunt. So I was thinking I would have sunk it with these three shots, but actually um, completely miss. And now there comes an interesting part, because my range is just about 13 kilometers. The Cleveland is a tier 6, it's faster than me, and if we're going in the same precise direction, it will outpace me, and the only way I will be able to hit the Cleveland, because it outranges me, is if it turns broadside as it is doing right now. So I think I was quite chanced here. So I take another two shots, I'm thinking, oh come on, most definitely I will need to be hitting, plus I see either other shots coming in from my allies, and I'm thinking, come on, it's just ridiculous that we can't get this like 500 damage output on a Cleveland that's a considerably big target. Um, so after all this, I must say, maybe insane dodging, maybe just uh, a lot of RNG on, on the enemy side, however, I do decide to take the final shot, and finally, I managed to blow up the cruiser with these resting 500 health points. However, at this point in time, I can't spot any other enemies. I think I'd, I'd seen some planes to my right, but I wasn't entirely sure like just how far away. I was thinking the aircraft carrier might have been uh, behind the final island on the minimap. So I think, well, I just need to kill this Miyogi. I mean, it's a very sad target because I can't do any, say, crazy torpedo ambush at point-blank range anymore since it's at 12 kilometers so kind of reluctantly I I fire on it thinking oh well this uh, this this is what this is the only thing I can do there's no other targets in sight we're only a few ships and we really need to be doing doing let's say DPS however I, I stop tunnel visioning and I become more aware of the minimap and suddenly a wild aircraft carrier appears and finally a completely unprotected aircraft carrier that has just sent his, all his planes away basically and I'm pretty sure he will be targeting the battleship behind me so I'm thinking I pretty much have free reign here over this um, aircraft carrier however I do have a bit of a positioning issue and let me explain I have an island here on my left so I can't really um, expose my full broadside, this is only a measly six cannons in any case. However, I'm ha I'll have to, let's say, satisfy myself by slowly whittling down this carrier two shots at a time. Because I have two options otherwise, circle around the island and risk not firing at the, um, at the aircraft carrier because the, um, the hill blocks my view. Otherwise, I could actually turn around, but... Um, I, the, the guns, the gun turning uh, velocity is ridiculously low, so that would not have been an option. However, I'm actually in no rush, uh, there's no other enemies, I can be hitting right now, there's only this aircraft carrier, I do miss those two shots, that's unbelievable. Uh, that's the problem with getting too lax and too comfortable. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm just gonna expose my broadside, fire torpedoes, just because if some random enemy ships just like pops out of nowhere and sinks me, I'd like to have some kind of policy insurance against, let's say, sinking this aircraft carrier. So, eventually, I get my full full cannons to um, bear on it. I get this 4.5k hit. That's really good. And I'm thinking this last salvo enemy is done for and it's kind of funny because up to this this point I've sunk a destroyer a battleship a cruiser and an aircraft carrier so basically all four varieties of ships 
and I'm feeling very confident, feeling um, enthusiastic because usually um, Furutaka games uh, tend to be particularly subpar and delusional um, because I really don't enjoy the ship, I'm having a bit of a hard time adapting to it. So there was a Furutaka on the left but I decided to ignore it because there's an Ayoba here and let's say remembering my ambush tactics I used before I'm thinking great I'm behind the island this Ayoba is at only 8.4 kilometers and I'm slowly converging on it so why not I have torpedoes let's try and torpedo it as soon as it um, as it turns uh, here around the island so I'm getting ready although this will be one of those I won't have let's say second chances like I had with the battleship um, because when I get in if I get too close, the the other cruiser will shoot like crazy on me and will do massive damage. So when I come out here though, I'm in for a bit of a rough surprise because the um, Aoba that is now going to pop out is actually much further ahead than what I would have considered. I must have um, ill-considered uh, its speed. I citadel him, but he most definitely citadels me. So I do release the torpedoes, however, um, I start to realize that my torpedoes are not leading enough, and this is what I meant when I th when I when I th I, th I really thought uh, that Aoba um, wa was not that far ahead. I had, that was probably leading for a target that was further behind, and so this kind of messed up all the calculations I made, and it was a kind of do or die situation. And the Aoba is just hitting um, my ship and there's not really much I can do. The turret, as you can see, are never going to bear on the enemy in time. I fire these desperation torpedoes because I'm thinking maybe I can get the Aoba to chase me and the Aoba could then maybe blunder into one of my torpedoes. But um, then, I, then again, maybe the, um, the enemy captain is not that inexperienced. So I'm thinking here as I slowly get whittled down to a measly 600 health, that probably the only thing I can do right now is circle around the island and somehow hope um, that he's gonna miss his last salvo which actually leaves me with an incredibly low 130. So I'm thinking well th the kind of last desperation thing I can do right now is again circle around the island, hope that the enemy Ayoba uh, will do something uh, rather stupid and position himself in let's say uh, in an ill-conceived way and I will actually be able to torpedo him anyway and it's also like such a close game because uh, we have a destroyer, they have a battleship so our, maybe our uh, destroyer could take it out and if I can manage to take out um, the enemy cruiser that would be fantastic and that could really uh, let's say tip the balance of the battle in our favor for the win uh, so I'm as approaching here let's say the, um, the deadline point I'm thinking um, there's two options. Either he's right in front of me waiting for me or he's gone, let's say, uh, to the back of me and has decided to follow me and that would have maybe might have been the ideal scenario. So when I, as soon as I pop out, and I'm actually rather surprised to not be seeing anything, so I check again and apparently I haven't spotted anything. M maybe that could have been a mistake, maybe I didn't wait long enough to spot the enemy. However, the, actually the Aoba was there and most certainly does sink me. Uh, so lesson learned in this case, maybe try to be still a bit more aware and just wait a tiny bit more for detection to kick in. However, I think the whole point of the video uh, was to show that the Furutaka, um, albeit being, let's say, uh, a rather dreadful ship overall, um, can sometimes be brought to, sh uh, to shine, let's say, in very specific and particular situations. And having said this and having wrapped this up, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, comment, and really do anything you feel like doing since um, I'm quite new and any kind of feedback is much appreciated. And hopefully I will see you guys next time.